switch front side backstab, plus her in the city associates. Love is a foul beast that greets you with warm talons wide and leaves you empty and with dripping and ripped features. In today's age, with their every private affair advertised on social media one can't help but to notice the amusement of those who stand watching from the sidelines as they chuckle like jackals when witnessing the discomfort of one's misfortune. Breakups face us all at one time or another with this brutal reality. The mind of the brokenhearted is paranoid and shaken. When the death of a relationship comes, it can do so with such a blow that one feels almost as if the cold welcome mat from death's door greets you at every turn. Voices in one's head are projected from thoughts of paranoia and insecurities, they seem to yell words of terror like, John, and I. All the while knives in one's back appear to twist and turn as the pain item am harder the pain is to deal with. The amusement at other people's misfortune is unfortunately a sickly byproduct of the oversaturated information society that we all willingly choose to share. Here we see a man on the edge, gasping and grasping onto past memories. His desperation is palatable at that what once was will be no more. Graves are dug and dreams for a future are reluctantly put to rest. Ninety nine problems and a n a v o on mom slash. How dare you make me a boy? She glances sideways into the mirror as if pretending that she doesn't want to see how beautiful her makeup really is. In a vain attempt to dismiss her own narcissistic compulsion, she momentarily shifts her attention in order to admire the destruction she has been causing online. The anonymous veil proves to be an ideal mask in which she can perform her scandalous online sacrifices. Google Google on the wall whose shall I hack attack drag and fall. The magical mirror wizard from Disney Snow White hovers about and instructs her how to do her evil deeds in a low and most demonic voice. She used to be a he but we speak not of this these days, not now or ever again. Vanity Smurf has a tantrum in the corner for reasons to do with self-image and the tribulations that accompany looking at one's own reflection too often. The she grows closer to the magic mirror and her connection with grows stronger. Her past profiles are forgotten as she transitions through one fixated obsession for destroying some random person's reputation to another. Le Demo in Heels, 1907 to 2022. Picasso once painted prostitutes at a brothel, it was seen to be a very distasteful and crude painting of its time. It was discovered later that he in fact painted that piece with the intention for it to be an exorcism painting and that his hope was for its creation to magically protect him from past lovers that he felt were conspiring to do him harm. In this piece we see Picasso's chroma and composition referenced despite many major alterations. It is clearly a painting of three figures in a room, two cigarettes in an ashtray, alcohol, the dark curtain is hiding the patrons, and of course the seductress being that of the source of entertainment. This painting is about the death of misogyny. Testosterone has been replaced for the hips of women. The lustful nature of men and the potency of it has never subsided throughout the ages, it is as strong and potent force now as it was 120 years ago when Picasso would frequent his local brothels. The question here is has for ease of commercial enterprise chief and the natural drive for last and its companion that being love. Here we have on the left a goofball boy, so excited to get his turn to wet his dick. He waits for his turn which is to come after the lady is done with a dead man. We can potentially read this as that when a man is done sexually he becomes dead and lifeless like a skeleton. We see this painting not from the view that Picasso would have intended us to in his original version, yet this portrayal is from the perspective of the working girl, the businesswoman. She's preoccupied even though she is the center of attention. She is distracted. Distracted with what's next. Who is next? Worship Guru Rule Book, some people just shouldn't drink. There was no way I could unlearn the fact that Sena was not real once I'd learned the truth. There was no way of giving back words once I had learned how to read them. I've never learned to unsee something that I had accidentally saw. It's a tricky thing to hear bad words all the time and then to not use them in conversation. 
I'm not sure if I have ever found the end of a rainbow, or if I've ever even looked for the beginning of one for that matter. Having just now thought of it I wonder if I haven't been living in a rainbow this I whole time? It's funny how life has a way of letting you know that all the things you've been wanting and waiting for you've had all along. I miss my crazy friends the most. I don't find them at church. I missing seeing great movies for the first time. When one thing is taken away it is always replaced with something else to take its place. I used to like dancing in public places like the meat section in the supermarket. That was until I realized that dancing was most probably invented by a couple of drunk people watching another couple of even drunker people simply trying to hold each other up from falling over. Painting is a lot like dancing when you think about it like that. Massive warm and fuzzy terrible achievements. Perhaps she is between chapters and simply stretching on the beach reading? Perhaps something more symbolic like she is being smothered by the weight of her own responsibilities? Perhaps laying in protest for any number of terrible achievements this century has blessed us with? The cool cats are all around, mostly laughing, usually very well dressed and never without a shortage of witty one-liner comments to make. As a boy I recall getting mad when other boys at the beach would spy on my mother as she sunbathed topless between the rocks. I would run over to her and exclaim, Mum these boys are looking at you, put a top on, dot. I was young, my mum would just giggle, she didn't care. She was quite proud of her boobs. Lady lay stretching out, soaking up that feeling, you know the one? It's the one between breaking yourself in half and being completely and utterly limp with relaxation? It is the kind of feeling you get when you're on the toilet and you shiva for no apparent reason. You know that feeling you can get when staring into the nothing of your mind while being awake and doing it for so long that you feel like you are actually catching up on sleep? This painting is like that feeling because there is always something or someone close by watching and waiting for a perfect moment to pull you away from your pleasures with an abrasive shock. And if it's not something or someone from the outside world that wakes you up to the harsh reality of life then it's that little annoying thing inside you that's always ready to crawl out of your privates and let you know that this massive warm and fuzzy inside feeling isn't a dream after all and that it's actually time to wake the fuck up. Prophetic Wonder Woman, Sheha. She stands proud on an altar, she is a powerful figure. A super being, a superwoman, Wonder Woman. Playing cards fall all around her like toy soldiers waiting to do her bidding. She is dripping with jewelry and an equal fitting of entitlement. The power in which she wields is spawned from the words of which she reads from the good book. Here we see a woman drunk with power. This painting is about how power can corrupt the truest of hearts. How the wise words written by humble prophets of the past have been weaponized by those who wish to inflate their own self-worth and wealth at the cost of those who will follow. In this painting we are compelled to question whether prophets are presented to us for their words of wisdom or simply to gain profits. Falling down to fall down and to feel the pain of defeat or rejection is nothing like being carried around with hands cheering in excitement after running and winning an important race. To accept being hung over is not like having the stubbornness of courage to instead keep holding on. To fall over and to never get back up again is to embrace what it is to truly become an adult in society's eyes. Only when one has lost the ability to fall over and get back up or the ability to be childlike for that matter does one find oneself firmly at the foot of that final journey upon death's door. Online S Divine Comedy The Descent on the Monster Man vs. Machine The race of our industrial revolution has caught up it would seem As much as we put the greatest brains and surgeons to the job of constructing artificial intelligentsia AI We realize that the mind of the computers we create are only as good as the power that we allow it to possess 
This painting attempts to reclaim humanity from the robots we call, AI, artificial intelligence. In this piece we see man's robot represented in the form of a machine nude female, limp, catatonic and powerless. The electrical socket has been removed. A grim reaper as head surgeon represents both the expiration of all mankind and our only hope to save it. Seemingly asleep, her power is literally removed as she is detached from her phone. This is emphasized by the Wi-Fi icon seen here upside down. She is dead without power, dead without the internet. As much as we'd like to believe that God is not online are we sure? And if I does develop a faith in some power greater than itself, what exactly will that be? Difficult to predict the future it is, more questions than answers I'm afraid. The Mad Hater, note, above title spelling intentional. The mythological pan transfused with the contemporary mythological Disney Mad Hatter depicted here in priest attire and playing his flute like a crazy-eyed pipe piper as Mickey Mice run after him in a seduced trance. Both twisted and loaded with ambiguous contradictions we are faced with the dichotomy of an amusingly comical vista wist equally a confronting and disturbing piece to unpack. A dichotomy that challenges the framework of the current contemporary social climate. This painting is about the identities who lead and the ones who follow them. We as the viewers chose to simply see the surface level, that being a cartoon-like image, or we take that next step where we find ourselves forced to push boundaries regarding traditional Christianity. The prolific and constant abuse of leaders within hierarchical power struggles, the cancelling of comical misogamy and furthermore, the core fundamentals regarding consensual and mature decision-making versus influence and seduction. Wonderful Heroism, Against Dead Shehers, Contemporary Mythology, Pop Culture, Pop Mythology, Anti-Culture, Function versus Fashion, Reality, Big Men Beeping Horns, Google History, Actual Terror, Fighting in the Rain, War Games and Slippery Boots, Biblical Mythology, Ancient Numerology, Astrophysics, The Apple in the Garden, A Snake in the Tree, The Small Things with Big Expectations, Ambitious Men, Masses of Blood, To Lose Your Hearing, The Holy Mountain, A Small Name Tag in a Large Cold Room, Some Giant Wet Label with a Word on It Sprayed in Red, Being Tied to a Christmas Tree Party, Candy Canes and Lollipops Wide-Eyed Smiling Mouth Full of Teeth Whispering Poison to Suffocate Your Noble-Hearted Naivety. Trust lay here rotting and so it should, lay to waste like the child that grew it of sincerity and hope. Drag him it was said. Powerful words make for powerful teachings. Never again to fall so far for love or for war, never to feel a skin in that cold sweat. They say that if you lay on the ground then you have less of a ways to fall. I made this painting as a means to activate discussions about topics which I have had difficulty rationalizing or coming to a steadfast conclusion about. They also say that the poor fool is the man who falls on his back and breaks his nose. Holding on is not like being hung over. I have seen the darkness and I do not wish to go back. I am happy to have returned. There are many stories to tell. Let us move forward instead and never look back. An exhausted slender man takes rest. His name is Sisyphus and his task is to roll a large boulder up an even larger hill for his entire life. That is his story, this is his job and our lesson to learn from. A black Dumbo the elephant also rests but not entirely. The young elephant is dressed as clown and is here viewed as a cushion or seat for the wearying traveler. Sisyphus is immediately assumed in the role of oppressor as we are led to wonder what lesson we are to learn from this picture. Naturally we question, who is carrying who in this scenario of struggle? Racial tensions are upon the forefront for this painting suggests we digress our minds to a time in history we would rather forget. Lest we not forget Dumbo the elephant clown, that painted on white-faced patience. Is the circus coming to town, or are we living in it already? To have been so caught up in all the drama that one loses track of what is funny and what is absolutely not. The carrot dangles above the elephant's head yet it does not seem interested. The carrot is fresh, so fresh that it reminds us this man who holds the stick is not without resources. He is not without fresh produce at least. 
nor does it seem apparent that is he without the will to wave that stick, whether it be to wield threats of damage or to tease by dangling reward in faces of those without. Here we are faced with the dilemma of feeling pity for a cursed man destined to live his life out enduring hard labor versus the moral obligation to his companion. Sure, Sisyphus has to roll a boulder up a hill his entire life and that must have sucked ass, but that is what he was built for. Was Dumbo really done? Has any elephant been built to fly? Are clowns even supposed to be funny? Who is more the fool in this situation? The fool Sisyphus, or the fool Dumbo, who follow? Woke. How beautiful it is to wake up on a bright sunny day to watch the butterflies flutter around the garden. Some people prefer to go to a busy bar and watch a UFC fight ring played on a big screen television. Others dream of marching down the streets of their city with signs and screaming abusive words about some distant frequency of mindset that they don't agree with. Some just like to sit around and laugh as they watch it all burn to rubble. I'm not sure which category I personally fit into, but I'm quite certain it's none of the above. Behind the scenes breakup, explaining NFTs. It's both interesting and scary when one can identify themselves as an animal or an emoji as opposed to identifying themselves as a human being. Falling in love with a swamp thing is unheard of these days, let alone kissing a frog in hope of your prince charming to magically appear. Love is found within the swipe of a finger in the palm of your hand and gone in as many farts in the wind. Eye contact has been substituted by a double tick or darker shade of grey to confirmation you are being understood. Text messages are so impersonal, so much less personal than a handwritten note, yet we use them for almost everything. Considering that the framework of written communication within societies around the world has become broken down and abbreviated to a point of relative absurd reduction. The opposite is happening in fact to the framework of these same societies in the way of complicating accepted psychological fundamental ideologies in regards to identity and how one goes about communicating one's sensitivities which preclude one's preference of themselves to the world. I used to live in Brisbane and as a child I was encouraged to run around the neighborhood with golf clubs and kill toads. I always had a problem with this. A lot of boys I hung out with did not have a problem with this, or killing in general. I still think about those boys these days and it still worries me. Essentially, a person of any nationality, color, shape, race, sexual preference or age should be treated with the degree of respect that one deserves based on the substance of that which one behaves. Life is only as simple as others allow you to be yourself, and thus we find ourselves at the beginning of the question again. So does that mean the problem is the solution? Or that there was never a problem all along? I guess it's one of those chicken or the egg things. Is the glass half full or is it half empty? And while we are on the subject, what the fuck is an NFT really anyway? Seated on the highest star, to whom this realm is subject and devoted. Behind every great man there's an even greater woman rolling her eyes. This painting is about all the great women that did great things and never got acknowledged for it. This painting is an apology on behalf of all men to those women for not giving props where they were due. It was both disappointing and shocking to learn that only 5% of all public statues worldwide are dedicated to significant historical female figures. This painting is a tribute to all the women that have had to carry so much of the load and who have worked so hard only to be disrespected and looked past when it came time for congratulations to be handed out. This painting is for my mom. This painting is for my grandmother. This painting is for my sisters and daughters. This painting is not for anybody that forgot to credit their partner when they officially deserved it. This painting is not for all the selfish douchebags that make lame excuses to not make date night a priority. This painting is for all the great women whose names we haven't been taught to admire everywhere.